December 12th, 2025. My name is David Knox and I have MSA. And I don't, don't know how to start this article, this conversation, but I'm going to show you something you have not seen before. And it's very, very interesting. Now, how do I get myself into this very sophisticated article? Well, if you've ever, you know, been on a, a, a date with somebody and you look at their skin, you know, you're like, you're like, wow, you have some great skin, girl. You have an MS, you have an MS, and I said it jokingly because we now might have the ability to diagnose MSA with just a skin swab. There is a, we have to rethink neurodegeneration from the outside in. So today I'm going to talk to you about something that illustrates some of the most challenging questions in neurodegenerative diseases and how we diagnose them. So neurodegenerative conditions like Parkinson's disease and MSA can obviously upend our people's lives, families, and communities. These disorders are progressive, complex, and historically incredibly hard to diagnose and treat. With MSA in particular, traditional approaches focus almost entirely on the brain. Yet we are beginning to understand that the story of these diseases doesn't start or end solely in the brain. A recent pilot study by the MPJ Parkinson's disease out of, out of China. And by the way, who, 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 better, who better to have studies for MSA than China that has over a, a billion people? They have to learn to have more patients with MSA. So they have the MPJ over in China, Parkinson's Parkinson disease, has opened up a, an exciting new chapter in the neuroscience playbook. In that study that we're talking about, research, researchers explored something surprisingly overlooked, the skin micro, microbiome. That's right. The community of bacteria, fungi, and other microbes that live on the skin surface. For years, scientists have invest, investigated the gut, gut microbiome for its connection to neurological. So this study took, took, took took to get to the next bold step of asking whether the micro microbial ecosystems on the skin might also carry signatures of a neuro neurodegenerative disease. Why the skin? Well, it's our largest, largest organ, our first barrier with the outside world and a rich habitat for microorganisms. Its microbes interact with our immune system influence, influence inflammation and now may even reflect systemic changes linked to the, to the disease long thought to be purely neurologic. In this pilot study, researchers compared skin samples from people with MSA, Parkinson's, and healthy, 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 healthy people. What they found was remarkable, distinct microbial patterns on the skin that were linked not just to disease presence, presence but also to the disease features. Those microbial signatures were powerful enough to help classify individuals into the correct group. Well, what does that mean? It means that our outermost layer, the skin, may carry clues to processes, processes happening, happening deep inside the nervous system. It suggests that, that neurodegenerative disease doesn't just affect neurons, it may leave breadcrumbs all across the body's ecosystem, including the parts we interact with every single day. Let's pause to appreciate how significant that is. For decades, we focus almost exclusively on brain imaging, clinical exams, and cerebral spinal markers to understand neuro neurodegeneration. That work has been essential, but it's also been slow, expensive, and sometimes invasive. By contrast, microbiome sampling is non-invasive, scalable, and could potentially be done outside of clinical settings. This discovery doesn't just add a piece to the puzzle, it changes the shape of the puzzle itself. It invites us to think multidimensionally, integrating neurology with immunology, microbiology, and systems biology. It underscores a hopeful truth that answers to the hardest questions are not confined to the organs we traditionally study. 
but, we, but may be found in the connections between systems. That brings us to the heart of the optimism behind this, re this research. First, it suggests new routes for earlier early, early diagnosis. If the skin microbiome can reflect the biology of disease, then we, then we may one day develop simple screening tools, tools that are less invasive than, than spinal taps and potentially more ac accessible than the MRI scans. Second, this line of research highlights that neuro neurodegenerative diseases are systemic, not purely cerebral. That's a game changer. It means we can expand our therapeutic targets beyond neurons to immune modulation, microbial balance, and even skin brain communication pathways. Third, and perhaps most importantly, this work fosters a mindset of scientific innovation. It reminds us that progress often comes from asking what if, and then being brave enough to pursue the answer. Yes, this is early research. Yes, you find you see confirmation in larger studies, but the implications are profound. They point toward a future where neuro neurological diseases are, are, are understood, not as isolated brain disorders, but as conditions with signatures throughout the body, signatures we can measure, monitor, and ultimately influence. Influ so today, let's celebrate this step forward, a step that challenges assumptions, expands horizons, and brings us closer to a future where neurodegenerative diseases are detected, detected earlier, treated more effectively, and perhaps even, even prevented. Because in science, as in life, hope is not just a feeling, it's a, traje it's a, traje it's a trajectory built on curiosity, validated through evidence, and propelled forward by discoveries like this one. I want to point out two photos for you to help better understand this. Now, the first one, you're going to yell at me and say, Dave, what, why would you do this to me? All these colors and graphs and, you know, why? Simple, because we have to. There, there were, there were 31 patients in this, this well, 31 MSA patients, 20 partisans and 30 healthy, healthy control, right? Now we can see they, they, they mix, they change color patterns from the left to the right. We're really looking at the, at the right, the right grid here. All these charts to the right. MSA being in red, healthy is green, and Parkinson is in blue. So here's what we know. These, there are two areas specifically that they look for changes in the skin the microbiome. One being the cervical or the neck, and the second being the, um, auxiliary or armpit for MSA. So taking samples of skin in the microbiome in these areas shows us a pattern. So in patients that have MSA, they show an increased bacillus right here in the middle. You remember the red, increase from healthy, healthy patients. So you see that both MSA and Blue Parkinson's is, is increased over the healthy patients in, in green. There's an increase in bacillus is an environmental skin, skin associated bacteria. An, incre an increase may reflect altered skin immunity or sweat composition in MSA. Next increase we would see in patients with MSA is the Dermatitis bond, the Privotel 7. Again, you can see the increase with MSA. Slight increase in Parkinson's, and healthy is all the way down. So this is a big marker for MSA. Privotella 7 is an, is an anaerobic genus typically found on um, mucosal areas. Increased levels may indicate changes in skin moisture, sebum, or local inflammation. Back to the skin, right? How many, how many times do we complain about issues with our skin with MSA? Uh, for, for, for many things. Now, also, we would see in, for MSA patients an increase in the strep, 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 that's to the very bottom. And also, MSA in red is, all, is to, to, off the chart. But Parkinson's and healthy, healthy people are about the same average. Again, that's another leading in, in, in indicator. Also, just, just not that we see increases with 
of these things with patients with MS, but we also see decreases, decreases from normal. So one of those decreases would be uh, Brachybacterium, which is right here in the middle. You see how blue partisans is halfway up, healthy control people are all the way up, and MSA is you know at least half of what the uh, partisans is. And uh, Brachybacterium is an enormously harmless environmental skin colonizer plays a role in re reduction may in re reduction may indicate loss of my microbial diversity. In MSA patients, we also see a in, in, in the cervical area. Yeah, exuri the genobacter. Genobacter is third from the bottom. You see healthy control. Green is all the way up, and red MSA is all is down with Parkinson's all being way down. So the genetic factor is usually a minor non-pathogenic skin organism. Lower levels may, may reflect altered local pH or granular, granular secretions. pH is everything with skin. That, that, that's absolutely for sure. Now, in the... Um, so the meaning of the cervical pattern in MSA, MSA seems to shift neck microbiome away from its usual, usual stable community and toward bacteria associated with inflammation, moisture changes, and reverse, reduced diversity. This could relate to auto autonomic dysfunction affecting skin glands, sweating, and immune response. Very important. Now, in the armpits or axillary, Microbiome changes in MSA pa patients with MSA would see increased coronary bacteria, coronary bacteria, but I'm not saying that correctly. So we're looking for increases. Now you see all three at the very top here are elevated with the, the healthy particles and MSA, so they're all ele elevated. That change is a ma major sweat associated bacteria. Increased levels are strongly linked to changes in sweat composition and autonomic dysfunction. Both are seen in MSA. So it, it, it would be normal. It would not be unusual to see organisms in blue and MSA in red, both, both being elevated to an extent because we do have autonomic dysfunction and sweat issues with MSA and Parkinson's, Parkinson's as well. We also see an increase in, um, which is third from the top. Slightly increase, uh, healthy control is way up there, but slight, slight increase. That is an environmental gram negative or organism not usually dominant on skin. Its rise suggests it's a disturbed microbial landscape where non typical species, species can grow. So blue and red is not, not supposed to be on this chart at all, but yet it is. So that's some, something to think about. Also in the armpit area of the skin, we would, we would see a, a decrease, especially versus Parkinson's, of the fine goldia. Fine goldia is the second from the top. That is an anaerobic skin bacterium. Lower abundance compared to Parkinson's disease populations may indicate me metabolic or moisture differences. In the MSA, they are less favorable for this anaerobic. anaerobic. So again, MSA is, is, is off the chart compared to Parkinson's and healthy control. Again, just, just another indicator of possible MSA or Parkinson's. So what's the meaning of the armpit area? Well, MSA, appear, MSA appears to, to favor sweat associated Carnivac bacterium while reducing anaerobic fungodia, producing a distinct signature from PD. This fits with MSA's more severe autonomic dysfunction, which alters sweating, sweating patterns and skin moisture more dramatically than PD. Skin moisture and sweating patterns, I can attest to for all that, that's for sure. Overall, across both these sites, right? The more, more the coronary bacterium in bacillus is linked to sweat, sweat changes and reduced skin barrier protection, more 
Provotilla and strip strip talk to this should this suggest shifts shift toward mucosal type or inflammation associated bacteria in having less fungodia or bacterium in genia vector results in a loss in normal commensal balance in microbial diversity. Why this matters for MSA research? These patterns can serve as non-invasive biomarkers. It may reflect autonomic dysfunction of sweat glands, immune changes in neurodegenerative disease, and alterations in skin environment caused caused by MSA progression. This is the second picture. Is this photo photo that I took from the article? Right. It shows that having these alterations. In the skin microbiome, these are, are directly connected to cognition, osteomic dysfunction, and uh, fine motor control. Motor control in, in general. So, this, this is a test that is something that, you know, very distinct alterations compared to Parkinson's and healthy control. So, from this small pilot program, pilot testing, they were able to see distinct different differences between Parkinson's and healthy control subjects. And also these microbial changes correlate with clinical symptoms and disease severity, suggesting potential for diagnostic and prognostic use. You know, this having to, a lot of this or a little of this also correlates having a lot of this is a symptom or a little bit of this. And it, it's, it's one for one. We, we, we talk about how, how bad s- 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 symptoms are. So, again, you know, the next steps are to widen this, this investigate this pilot program for you know, trials. Um, but we have something in the works in China, and they're very, very good with in the medical community. Their research institutes. To to, to in the name of the article, I will, I will cite the article website into the uh, link link below. But this is something that's very interesting. We may have in the very near, very near future have a, a, a skin swab diagnostic test, you know, like you have when you're a kid. You know, they, they give you a little stamp on your skin and and see if you have a free or disease. So something something as simple as that. Something is checking for an allergy, per se, you know. So I hope you find this beneficial. Um, and again, my voice, my voice is up and down, but I thank you for watching. If you like it, please give us some feedback. On behalf of Daisy and myself, we wish you a very safe end of the year uh, to you and your family. And we will be back with another video. Thank you very much.